What I am, family? It's your boy SCN TV. Back at y'all with another update. Now, um, of course, the city of Chicago has not slowed down. As a matter of fact, it's speeding up. And honestly speaking, I think it's time for some of those parents that act like they don't see or they don't understand what's going on with their children. I think it's time for some of y'all to step up. Some of y'all to stop condoning what's going on. What is it that I did that God is putting all of this on me? You know, it's only so much I can take. Latanya Gordon asked the question any mother in her situation would. The 53-year-old widow was the mother of six, but in three months' time has had to bury two of her sons, both victims of gun violence. I wouldn't wish this on nobody. And let alone, I'm finna bury another child within three months. Three months. Three months. It's ridiculous. Gordon's 15-year-old son, Terrence Malden, was shot and killed Friday night, not far from their home in the Jeffrey Manor neighborhood on the city's south side. Nicknamed Munchie, the teen was a rising Boeing High School sophomore who participated in one of the city's mentoring programs. This afternoon, Gordon told one of his former teachers. He had his phone in his hand. I seen his arm go like that. And I looked down at him and his eyes just rolled in the back of his head. I knew he was gone then. Not two blocks away, months before on April 6th, Terrence's older brother, 20-year-old Tyler Malden, who worked two jobs, was also murdered. They didn't have a chance to fall in love. They didn't have a chance to even have their own kids. The brother's killers are still on the loose. I'm sick of it. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. I, you know, we talk about Black Lives Matter, but I'm sick and tired of what's going on in these streets. We Amid the family's grief, there is also a mother's anger over all the guns on the streets and what she calls a lack of police presence on the south and west sides. This as she warns about the neighborhood code of silence that's making Chicago a city full of mourning mothers. All of this, I don't know nothing, but you're saying something. Yeah. You know, yeah. here it is, you got killers living in your house, yeah. eating your food, mm -hmm sleeping in your bed, but you refuse to say anything until it happens to you. Children are being shot in the street. Niggas are being chased down the E-way. Guns are coming in our neighborhood at a rapid pace. Some people just don't understand how serious the circumstances are until they put in a position to where they forced to understand how serious the circumstances are. You know that if your child carrying guns and they out in the street all times of night, nine times out of 10, they gang banging. At the end of the day, you have to do the best job that you can to save your child. Because when it happens to you, ain't nobody gonna give a fuck. People gonna cry for 10 minutes and then it's back to life as usual. It's a lot going on out here. And the things that the shorties are condoning now, the things that the shorties are making cool, like killing babies and bragging about it and things of that nature, it's not what's up. But what I do want to say is this. Let's not forget that these shorties is not going to get these guns. These guns are being given to them. At least 22 people shot. And some lawmakers and activists are saying guns from Indiana are a major part of the problem. Good evening to you. I'm Gaynor Hall in tonight for Jackie Bang. And I'm Tamon Bradley. WGN's Megan Dwyer has our top story tonight. Megan. Yeah, Gaynor and Tamon, they are concerned about illegal guns coming from the state of Indiana into the city of Chicago uh, to be used in crimes. They are calling on the governor to crack down on these so-called gun pirates. Innocent children are dying in the streets of Chicago. Babies are dying in the streets of Chicago. At a press conference this afternoon on the border of Illinois and Indiana, State Representative LaShawn Ford called on Governor J.B. Pritzker to protect Illinois from Indiana's guns. The way the law is now, there is no communication between the border states. He is calling for a Midwest compact among governors. Anytime a gun is sold to an Illinois resident, Illinois would get an alert. Mayor Lightfoot, if your child was shot 
killed by an illegal bullet that came from this state, you would be living. We've got to protect our borders. According to a 2017 report by the University of Chicago Crime Lab, Indiana is the primary source for approximately one out of every five crime guns that are recovered in Chicago. People are dying every day. Babies are dying. Black people are dying. The report highlighted Chicago's challenge when it comes to addressing illegal guns within a loosely regulated national gun market. The University of Chicago Crime Lab has found gangs often know where it's easiest to get guns, which is why states with lax gun laws like Indiana and Mississippi are a primary target for gang members. While most guns used in Chicago crimes are sold in Illinois, a third can be traced to Indiana, Mississippi, and Wisconsin. We believe that if Governor J.B. Pritzker led this Midwest compact calling on a database so that every state knows that there are guns being sold and being returned back to their state. We believe that we could stop some of the illegal running and trafficking of guns. We reached out to the governor's office today to see if he might be on board with something like this. We did not hear back. Also, we need to understand that in certain situations, they like to set the stage. And this is exactly what I feel as though is going on in Chicago right now. Every time you look around, it's something. It's babies being killed, people being robbed, minute to minute, police running people over in the streets, police killing people, people killing people. It just looks like total chaos. And lo and behold, they will have martial law in the streets of Chicago very soon if it keep going like how it's going. Anyway, that's today's update. It's your boy. Debris litters the road along Halstead and 118th Streets. Remnants of a deadly crash last night, which sent three police officers to the hospital and killed a 33-year-old man on a minibike. Chicago police say the unmarked squad car was in the West Pullman neighborhood traveling southbound on Halstead around 1030 with its emergency equipment on as it responded to a call. The mini bike appears to have been turning onto Halstead from 118th Street when it collided with the squad. It's unclear whether officers saw the mini bike as this particular model does not have front or back lights installed. A woman eating at a nearby restaurant when the crash happened describes what she saw. His lights was on, but his siren was not on. He was just flying real, real fast. The man was on the curve right here. He hit the man. Um, when he hit the man, the car swerved and went up in the air, and the man did too, and it went over there. 